democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're talking about the historic vote that has taken place in the New York State Legislature on Friday. It was the New York State Senate, uh, signed off on soon after, um, right around midnight, by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who does happen to be Catholic. We're joined by Ann Northrup, co-host of Gay USA, journalist and activist, Assemblyman Daniel O'Donnell, who's a Democratic member of the New York State Assembly, on the forefront of the issue of marriage equality, um, and was the first openly gay man elected to the New York State um, Assembly. We're also joined by Kenyon Farrow, who is a longtime LGBT activist and writer, former executive director of Queers for Economic Justice. He blogs at KenyonFarrow.com. His book, Stand Up, The Shifting Politics of Racial Uplift, will be published next year by South End Press. The role of the Catholic Church. Um, Danny O'Donnell, let's start with you. Well, uh, I was raised Catholic. Um, I, I'm familiar with what the sacraments are. Um, and the sacrament is holy matrimony. The sacrament isn't marriage. Uh, they are very different things. There are many different reasons why one is ineligible to get the sacrament of holy matrimony. Unless, of course, you're the mayor, former mayor of the state of New York and you get to have it three times, most people only get holy matrimony once. Um, so the, the church's position, the Catholic Church's position, um, has been opposed, and they led a fight to stop this. Um, and they were very successful previously, um, and the governor was brilliant in how he handled this issue and how he handled uh, dealing with their opposition. Obviously, if you don't want to marry somebody of the same gender, then don't. Um, the Catholic Church's position and other churches' position that um, it's against their teaching um, flies the face of our constitutional history. Thomas Jefferson wrote that our civil rights have no dependence on religious opinion. And during this year's debate on the floor of the Assembly, which I must say was more civil than the previous two times that we've had this debate, um, you know, one of the members kept on waving his, his Torah at me. The Torah says this, the Torah says that, and I didn't have the heart to tell him that my family, we didn't read the Torah. And the thing about religion is religion is individual, and re religion is uh, across the board. People's faith uh, can't be interfered with by government. And so government has no role in making these decisions. That's the position I took. That's the position that uh, Governor Cuomo took. I wanted to go on in The Times in this section called Outgunned Opponents. It was befuddling to gay rights advocates. The Catholic Church, argu arguably the only institution with the authority and reach to derail same-sex marriage, seemed to shrink from the fight. As the marriage bill hurtled toward a vote, the head of the church in New York, Archbishop Timothy M. Dolan, left town to lead a meeting of bishops in Seattle. He did not travel to Albany or deliver a major speech in the final days of the session, and when he did issue a strongly worded critique of the legislation. He called it immoral and an ominous threat. It was over the phone to an Albany-area radio show. And well, I, I don't know uh, how to read the uh, uh, the real balance on that, but I think the Catholic Church was quite active against this and was threatening members of the legislature to excommunicate them, and that was a problem. It's profoundly depressing to me that we have to deal with these issues along the way when we're talking about civic uh, marriage. But I do think that the governor and the legislature did a smart thing, which was, instead of standing up and saying, don't be ridiculous, this is not a religious question, they said, OK, OK, we'll deal with your uh, concerns. We will put into the bill explicitly the religious exemptions, that you don't have to marry someone in your uh, church or synagogue or whatever if you don't want to. But the fact is, that was always the law. And all it was was a restatement of existing human rights law in a way that gave uh, a conservative or religious uh, legislation legislators cover. Kenyon Farrow, you are not as thrilled about what took place on Friday night. What are your concerns about gay marriage? Well, I think that uh, my concerns about gay marriage, and particularly the way that it played out in New York State, um, I agree with, with what Ann said earlier, that um, the fact that uh, this took place in a Republican-controlled uh, Senate um, speaks to um, just how conservative of a movement, the kind of the LGBT uh, same-sex marriage movement is, but I think that there's something actually a little more uh, dangerous that is uh, happening. I think that 
um, we could potentially see New York State be the testing ground for um, other ways in which the Republicans might actually be able to roll out a triangulation strategy around marriage equality. And, and it would— uh, sort of go against what most people would normally think about uh, the Republican Party, but I think that they're making a few different calculations. One, um, as the New York Times article pointed out and Ann pointed out, that there are, um, one, uh, gay people within the Republican Party. Ken Mailman is one who's been doing a lot of fundraising. Uh, there's been this recent scandal with GLAAD, a, a board member, uh, Truth Coronado, uh, you know, who uh, also was an employee of AT&T and also had previously worked, it's now been reported for the Heritage Foundation, right? And he's a, is a gay man. Um, given the fact that there's been all of this um, kind of funding, one of the things that I see that the Republicans may do is to actually kind of create a wedge in the Democratic um, coalition around LGBT issues by drawing um, some of the gay donors who the Democrats are relying very heavily on in this next election, according to a story by Politico. Um, so if they're able to draw those donors into the Republican Party, and also understanding the Republican base is not where it once was on this issue, it's specifically younger Republicans um, who uh, mostly, when polled, agree with most of the sort of mainstream LGBT agenda. I think the Republicans could potentially use this actually as a strategy to um, kind of triangulate and become the party that actually wins marriage equality for, for LGBT people in the U.S. And I think that that is a dangerous place for the LGBT community to be situated, um, you know, in, in cahoots with the Republicans. And Northrop, your I, response. I take Kenyon's point and agree with it. There have always been—there's always been a segment of the gay population that has uh, voted Republican and been conservative. A third of the gay vote went for Giuliani in his uh, second mayoral run, I think. But I think the Republican presidential candidates, Michelle Bachman, Tim Pawlenty, Mitt Romney, are doing an excellent job of alienating gay voters. So I think I think we've got some uh, wiggle room still. Minnesota Republican. Republican uh, who will be announcing for president today, Michelle Bachman, announcing uh, for her candidacy later today from her hometown of Waterloo, Iowa, on Face the Nation yesterday, talked about some of her policy proposals and commented on the passage of same-sex marriage legislation in New York. I stand for the proposition that marriage is between a man and a woman. I think that Minnesota, for instance, this year, just about a month ago or so, passed at the legislative level the constitutional amendment to allow the people to decide what the definition of marriage will be. So that ballot question will be on the ballot in 2012. The people of New York came to a different conclusion. I think what we know is that ultimately you have all the various laws in the various states. There will be a conflict if someone from Pennsylvania or from uh, New York, for instance, moves to a state where marriage is between a man and a woman. Will these marriages be recognized? Ultimately, it will go to the courts. It's President of the United States, I will only nominate judges who are not act activist judges, who are not legislating from the bench. And so I think that's why it's going to be very important. Um, would to have would this that debate. be a litmus test for you, someone who was for same sex marriage? I want people who are for the Constitution. That's my litmus test. Michelle Bachman. Of course, my reading of the Constitution is that it promises equal rights for all. So, again, this is so insulting and so depressing to hear people talk like this. But it does remind us that our real goal is overturning the Defense of Marriage Act, the federal law that prevents people from uh, gaining all the federal rights of marriage. And while we celebrate uh, marriage rights in New York, it is uh, half glass full at best. Is there concern about a constitutional amendment being pushed forward in the country, uh, State Assembly Member Danny O'Donnell? Uh, I don't have concerns for that. And state by state, we don't have uh, referendums here in New York. Uh, in order to amend our constitution to change this, will require uh, votes of the state legislature in two consecutive terms. I can assure you the State Assembly under Sheldon Silver will never, ever, ever do such a thing. What about the rest of the country, Anne Arthur? Well, 29 states have 
constitutional amendments to forbid same-sex marriage. Another 12 have state laws against it. We have a long way to go. I think all of these laws and amendments are unconstitutional. I think DOMA will be overturned in the courts before it is repealed in the uh, U.S. Congress. I think we will strike all of this down eventually, but it's a, it's a hard slog. And what exactly is the schedule now? When can people get married, um, same-sex marriage in New York? They can State begin Assembly getting right married on July 24th, my fiancé's birthday. And so that's the first day that these— um, It's 30 days from, from the, the time of uh, signing? July 24th. Is when uh, it will begin. And are you planning to get married on that day? Um, we were not. Well, we haven't. I haven't had time to figure that all out. Um, and uh, clearly, we're going to get married. Um, whether uh, we won't be getting married on July twenty fourth. No, sometime thereafter. Yes. Ask them how long they've been together. How long? Thirty one years. <laughs> it's a long engagement. <laughs> But uh, interestingly, the state announced that you can start applying for marriage licenses online July 5th. Uh, so they're, they're preparing for an onslaught of applications. When did you first meet? We met the first day of college at Catholic University of America. I was a political science student. He was an acting student, S stunningly gorgeous. And uh, we became friends right away. And we've been in each other's lives ever since. And the significance of this being a Republican-led state Senate that signed off on this and Northrop, what does this mean also for other states around the country? Well, it is the first Republican-controlled part of any legislature to pass same-sex marriage. Uh, and it's interesting that when it lost two years ago, the state Senate was in the hands of the Democrats. But New York is such a wacky place. It has been called officially the worst legislature in the country. And I don't think any of us have any argument with that. Thanks, Ann. I, that's what I need today. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> don't you think that's true? Uh, I, I can't comment. I work really hard, Ann. Thanks. Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. Uh, do we have Dean Skelos to th thank for this? Because he, as the Republican leader of the state Senate allowed the bill to come to the floor for a vote and allowed his members an open vote on it rather than bringing down the hammer and saying everybody has to vote the same way. Well, th th this is the way I'll answer that. I think what has happened, there's been a sea change in public opinion. The, the polls are on our side. I think that a calculation was made that it was better to get the issue away than to leave it pending for another year. And so, in the end, I don't think this empowers the Republican Party in any way. It empowers individual elected officials who have the courage and the strength to, to do what's right. And so those four Republicans who voted yes should be lauded because it would be easier for them to just say, we're not going to do that. Um, I have known for at least a month that the votes were in the Senate to pass it if it was allowed onto the floor. And in the end, I believe that the calculation was made by the Republican leader, Dean Skelos, that it would be better to take this vote, let it pass, than wait and have another year of what we had for the last month, which was the state capitol was turned into a circus of crazy people. Uh, New York Assembly member Daniel O'Donnell, I want to thank you for being with us, and Northrop, a co-host of Gay USA, and also Kenyon Farrow, a longtime LGBT activist and writer, former executive director of Queers for Economic Justice, blogging at KenyonFarrow.com. His book, Stand Up, The Shifting Politics of Racial Uplift, will be published next year. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org.